picture this. A 12-year-old girl, a 12-year-old girl presents with a fever, a cough, and a cold. Her parents think she has gotten this from a friend of hers who is also sick. If they came to you for advice, what would you recommend? An in-person or an online appointment? Let's do a quick raise of hands. If you think an in-person appointment is better, raise your hands. Okay, and now if you think an online appointment is better, raise your hands. Interesting. <laughs> well, a relative of mine went through a similar experience recently. He developed mild flu symptoms and so decided to take some general flu medication to make them better. A few days later, his symptoms got a lot worse. So his parents decided to book him an online appointment through a telehealth service. Well, during this online appointment, his doctor decided to, decided to prescribe him some uh, antibiotics for severe flu symptoms and also advised him to take some rest. Less than 24 hours after that consultation, he got significantly worse. He was now unable to walk, had debilitating headaches, and was also throwing up blood. So ultimately, his parents decided to take him to the nearest emergency department in a nearby hospital. When he went to the emergency department, they conducted a few tests and examinations. The results of these showed that he was diagnosed with a severe case of dengue, um, which is a viral infection transmitted from mosquitoes to humans, which can be fatal if left untreated. He was then admitted to the intensive care unit, where he received several blood and platelet transfusions due to his fatally low blood and platelet levels. Thankfully, after two weeks in the ICU, he was, discharged with a, he was discharged due to his very stable levels and with a long road of recovery ahead of him. Now, looking back, if he had not gone to the hospital when he did, he could have died because the chances of him being able to survive the fatal dengue infection would have been extremely low. During the initial, initial online consultation, the physical exam was not conducted because it wasn't, they were not able to. Therefore, the necessary testing required to test him for dengue, malaria, or any other infections was not possible. Teleconsultation services became increasingly more popular in various different countries, such as India, especially after the COVID-19 pandemic of 2020, due to the overfilled hospitals and the incre general increase in the use of technology. So what is telehealth? It is the use of digital technology and platforms to access various different forms of healthcare services whether this be consultations, treatments, prescriptions, or health records. The concept of telemedicine originated in 1959 at the University of Nebraska, where a two-way television system was set up for medical students to have access to the results and scans of patients in hospitals to help them learn. Five years later, this became the first iteration in, of a teleconsultation. Over the last six decades, Several telehealth services have become more and more popular, especially due to the implementation of scanning devices like the MRI and X-ray, um, accessing health records and test results online, and the ability to book appointments using social media. However, teleconsultations did not become popular until the last few years. On March 13, 2020, a global pandemic was declared and a global lockdown due to it was also declared due to the se severe outbreak. People were ordered to stay at home, so they could not conduct any of their mundane tasks such as school, work, or working out in any public place. So they did all of this through a device. Therefore, this pandemic increased the use of technology in general, and so and digital appointments became the norm. Due to the circumstances through which teleconsultations became popularized, they're often viewed through rose-tinted glasses. Validly so. I mean, they did allow for all of us to get access to the necessary healthcare services that we needed while still remaining safe and following the necessary protocols to keep everyone else safe as well. With that being said, there, no one ever mentions the several drawbacks to having an online appointment rather than an in-person one. There are four main drawbacks to having an online appointment, having a teleconsultation rather than going to, the, going to an in-person face-to-face appointment. These are, number one, a lack of physical examination. A study showed that 76% of physicians believe that the physical exam is the most important part of a consultation. Therefore, a lack of it can result in misdiagnosis and ultimately mistreatment. Number two, 
of lack of accessibility across all demographics. According to the United Nations, as of 2021, more than 37% of po the population had never used internet services in their lifetime. Now, this prevents them from having access to all of these telehealth services as well. Furthermore, several, several developing countries do not have the infrastructure to have reliable internet or data services to access these services. Additionally, another study conducted in 2022 showed that respondents of telehealth visits in the United States, the majority of them, fell into the 35 to 64 year old age category and also spoke English as their primary language. Now, relating to this, the third disadvantage is that there is a possibility for a lack of accurate presentation of symptoms. People are, people are prone to sugarcoat or undermine their symptoms when speaking to a physician online over a screen rather than face-to-face -face in person because they can't feel that compassion. And lastly, the fourth uh, disadvantage is the fact that there is a, there's a possibility for an um, for a lack of professionalism from the physician. Another, stud another study conducted in 2022 showed that in the United States, there was, an there was a general increase in patient satisfaction across many different areas of a medical appointment um, when the appointment was in person rather than virtual, as you can see by the graph on the screen. Now, with the, with the rate that the world is being digitized currently, it is, it is inevitable that the medical field is also going to be influenced by the modern technological advancements that have come in over the last few years. However, due to the several reasons mentioned above, if this does happen, the medical field will become extremely unreliable, which can destroy several lives. Hence, a viable and sustainable solution to this is the creation of hybrid clinics. So what are hybrid clinics? It is exactly what it sounds like. It's basically a combination of physical interaction with technology. So let's say you get sick. What you would do is you'd go to the hybrid clinic and get a normal consultation with your GP or family practitioner that's there. This would consist of a physical exam, uh, any blood test required, or any other treatments that you need. Now, if they can treat you right then and there after the results they have found, they will. If not, they can write a referral to a specialist and you can, access, you can have an, a teleconsultation with that specialist using telehealth services available right then and there. This after which, if the specialist feels like you need treatment and the treatment is available to be, uh, available to be conducted in person right, th there, right there in the clinic, it will be by the physician. However, if not, then you, can, then you can book an appointment at the bigger hospital where you can get in-person specialist care that you need. In the worst case scenario, an ambulance can come and transport you from the hybrid clinic to the bigger hospital for the necessary care. Now, how does this solve the, how, how does this solve the problem? So, the the initial physical exam still remains. And as mentioned previously, physicians believe that the physical exam is the most important part of a consultation. It is also the first thing they learn in a hospital setting as medical students. So having this physical exam there as soon as you go in ensures for a decrease in the misdiagnosis rates and ultimately mistreatments, which can save lives. And secondly, the presence of a physician in person allows for any language barriers or communication errors to be eliminated almost completely. Physicians can also present your symptoms accurately through electronic health records or just verbally to your specialist through the telehealth services available there. Now, the placement of these clinics is also crucial to its accessibility across all demographics. In developed countries like the United States, the UAE, and Australia, these clinics will be, can be branches affiliated with bigger hospitals to ensure that the funding can be received from the same governing body as the bigger hospital. However, in countries that don't have this infrastructure, the, the clinics can be placed next to government facilities to ensure reliable internet and data access. Furthermore, we will be, you can implement mobile clinics as well to ensure accessibility across a large demographic in rural towns and communities. What is a mobile clinic? It's similar to an ambulance in that it, uh, it is equipped with all the necessary medical equipment to, um, to save someone's life in a life-threatening situation. However, it's different in that it is not only sent out for emergencies. It is sent out, it will be sent out on a regular basis to rural communities, populations, and towns where 
volunteers or the employees can check in on the population and make sure they're aware of all the resources available to them and so that any treatment can be done there if needed. As mentioned previously, funding is incredibly important. So um, funding can be received from the, in developed countries, the funding can be received from the governing body of the hospital as mentioned previously, or it can also be received by government, governmental organizations. These include the WHO, the CDC, or the United Nations. Where this is not possible, private independent private companies can also provide funding. Private companies have two things that allow, allow them to do this. This is corporate social responsibility and public-private partnerships. CSR is basically a moral obligation to, to several companies, which makes them more uh, obligated to provide support and improve awareness about social issues in their community. And PPP further emphasizes this by allowing that partnership between public entities and these private companies to occur. Now, lastly, the mobile and, the mobile and hybrid clinics can be run by volunteers or vo uh, non-governmental organizations such as Doctors Without Borders or any other charities if needed in an emergency situation. In the situ in the, these hybrid clinics are a very sustainable solution to, what, to the increasing use of technology and the dig digitization that is occurring in the world currently. The combination of these incredible innovations and the reliable medical practices that have kept us, the human species, alive for the last, cent for the last few centuries is essential to gaining, and gaining a healthy future. Thank you.